Well, hello everybody. Uh, it's Friday here in my home and everywhere in the world. I just wanted to come on here and say hello and hi to everybody and just uh, encourage you a little bit maybe today. I love the rain. It's pouring with rain here at my house. Praise the Lord. We needed every drop of it and I hope it keeps going for a little while longer. But um, yeah, I hope your week's been going great and uh, God's been blessing you and you've been having doors of opportunity to be able to bless one another and bless others around about you. Uh, I wanted to share a little bit today about um, a passage that is very well known probably to most of you that uh, listen here today or come, upon, come and listen to me. Um, it's out of Philippians and it's in Philippians uh, four, and I wanted to remind you that before I read this to you, that um, this was written by Paul while he was in prison, and um, he was not in a very good place. It was very uh, exhausting. He was very lonely. He was probably um, in desperate need um, at this time, and he wrote this while in prison, and you know, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I just love how, um, you know, sometimes when we're not going through the greatest things in life, it's when the Holy Spirit comes and just inspires us and encourages us. And so um, I hope that this will today, you know, we're in a world today that is um, in a lot of turmoil. There's lots of stuff going on that is ugly. Um, and some stuff, even in our homes that are not always the greatest and just relationships and stuff going on it says in philippians 2 um here it says in verse 15 it says even though you live in the midst of a brutal and perverse culture for you you will appear among them as a shining light in the universe offering them the words of eternal life and i love that scripture because even though we're living in a chaotic time and a perverse world and a perverse time and things seem to be you know nothing's right everything seems to be upside down there's still god and god is still there and holy spirit is still with us and uh, i want to ask you a question today is where is your mind at where is your thinking you know thinking has an amazing um, amount of power over our lives and uh you know what we think is what we are it's just the way it is and so i want to challenge you today where is your thinking where is your mind? What are you thinking? Where are you at? And so let me read this to you. And just remember, Paul's in a very desperate place. And this is what the Holy Spirit inspires him to write. It's in chapter 4, verse 6. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. But in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, define your request with thanksgiving. Continue to make your wants known to God. And you know, I think that's the very first step that we really need to uh, have a relationship with God and we need to pray and spend time with him. And you know, prayer is easy. It's just chatting to the Lord and just expressing what's on your heart. And so let him know exactly where you had and what you feel and what you're going through. And it says, and God's peace shall be with you, with yours. That tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is. So wherever we at, we just got to thank God that we can walk through this. And if it's in a bad place, we don't need to stay. We can walk through, right? And it says, and whatever sort that is, that the peace with tran that transcends all understanding shall be your God over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So God's already promising us that no matter what we're going through, no matter what this world looks like, that uh, we can walk through it and he will be with us as we come before him and, and share our petitions, our hearts, that he will give us peace in the midst of it. It says, for the rest, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and gracious, there is any virtue and excellence. If there is anything worthy of praise, 
think on this and take account of it. Fix your mind on it. Practice what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and model your way of living on it and God of peace, of untroubled, undisturbed well-being will be with you. And so that's my challenge today. As I share with you, I want to ask you, what are you thinking about? Where is your heart? Where is your mind? What are you thinking about? Because this is what we have to focus on. We have to think on these things. What is honorable, pure, just, kind, lovable, gracious, anything that is of excellence, that is worthy of praise. Think on these things. And so I'm encouraging you today that in the midst of everything, um, that there's good around about us. I mean, God is doing amazing things still throughout the whole earth, regardless of what we see or what we think, he is able to do. And we don't have to give permission to things that are in our mind. We may have thoughts that go through that are negative and not good and of God, but we don't have to build on those thoughts. We don't have to bring those thoughts into reality. We can cut those thoughts off. We need to renew our minds daily with the word of God. Amen. And he, and this is where our success or failure is. It's what rests on what we're thinking because what we're thinking, it develops and it grows within our hearts and our lives. And that's what we end up becoming or doing and there is stinking thinking out there let me tell you there is stinking thinking i love this you can't always control how you feel but you can always control how you act and so sometimes these things in our minds on how we feel or what we we're thinking are really stinking thinking but you know what we can control those things that are going on and even though they are true and things may going, be going on around about us that are not pretty, that we are not comfortable with, we can bring that under control. We can act different to what we think or what we see, and we can actually think on these things. And then it says that, you know, God will be our portion of peace and grace. He says, assured of our salvation, number one, we need to keep our minds set on him, and then that he will give us peace, transcends all understanding and so I'm, I really encourage you that let's get our minds let's get our minds in line with what the Word of God says and I know there's a lot going on that is bombarding us and you know on social media and the news and just people around about us hi Leslie good to see you on here um, it's just lots of stuff going on you know and in our families and just in you know everywhere but there's lots of good things you know i was talking to somebody last night about um, a ministry that is that we help and uh, support here and it's called shepherd's heart and you know she's saying i go every monday and friday and i i you know volunteer and it's amazing how many people are coming through and how much food we're getting in and it is good it's awesome to see that you know god is still continuing to do great works and there's good things going on there's good things going on and uh you know like this saturday i know that we had those awful that awful uh flooding and and hurricane down in louisiana well this saturday don't forget we have um somebody coming up and going to be picking up all our donations if you still want to bring something today you can they're coming tomorrow morning saturday morning to pick them all up but um you know out of all of it there's good they're going down and they're taking food and they're going to to witness and distribute and it's exciting these good things going on you know god always manages to bring beauty out of ashes somehow some way but i don't want you until you see those beauty uh, that he he creates and he does let's keep our minds captive to the word of god and to the thoughts of god and to the ways of god because really this is the the, the answer if you don't want to fret you don't want to be ang anxious for anything in any circumstance the first thing to do is to pray that's what it says in verse 6 pray and he will give you understanding and god will show you what you need and then he says that you need to make sure that you think on these things. What is your thinking? 
Where are you thinking? Where is your mind? What are you focusing on? Is it all negative? No, there's lots of positive. And you know what it is? Think on things whatsoever are just. There is just going on in this world. There is just going on around about you. There's things that are pure. Yes, there is pure. There's purity going on around you. There is things that are lovable and love going on around you. There's people that are very kind and wholesome and gracious. And these these things that are worthy of God's praise. And it says, think on these things and weigh them and take account of them and fix your minds on them. So I just want to encourage you a little bit today to, to challenge where is your thinking? What is your mind consumed with? Maybe it's time to bring some things into line with the mind of Christ, you know, and I know that sounds very spiritual, but it's very easy when you when you take note of what you're thinking and you take captive and control the things that you're thinking and bring them back to what really is truth. We need to focus on truth. It says on here, truth is one of the things that says that we can focus our mind on. There's a lot of deception around about us. There's a lot of things flying around that are lies and untrue and, you know, just anywhere and everywhere. But God is truth. And so think on these things. Think on the truth and and get your mind to line up with what is truth. You can not always control what is round about you and what is happening. We all know that. But what we can control is how we act and how we deal with things that are going on around about us. And that starts with the word of God. It also with our mind and our thought patterns and what we're thinking. So I'm encouraging you today that, you know, and I love it. I go back to this verse again in uh, Philippians 2 and it says, uh, verse 15, Even though we live in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation, spiritually perverted and perverse among you whom you have seen you are seen as bright lights stars or beacons shining out clearly in the dark in this world so let's get our lives to where our minds are lined up with the word of god we spend time with god and then we can go out and become those beacons and those shining lights clearly that shine clearly in this dark world. Let us be the ones that speak positive and speak life to uh, those around about us. Well, um, it's been good with sharing with you today. I hope that um, you have a great day and uh, blessings for uh, Sunday service. Come and join us if you can. Um, otherwise, we'll see you online. Thank you for those that have bought and donated to the relief um, effort that we're supporting down in uh, Louisiana. Bring it up um, to the church today if you want to. Uh, we'd love to bless Brother Curtis Baker with everything that we can and uh, we really appreciate it. And I'm, before I go, I just want to pray with you and just trust that God's going to um, intervene on your behalf. Wherever you're at, wherever your mind is, wherever your heart is, that God is for you and he's not against you. So Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, Father, that Holy Spirit, you inspired Paul to write these words in the midst of his turmoil, Father, as he sat in that prison, cold, lonely, desperate, that he was able to sit down and transcribe by the Holy Spirit these encouraging words out of Philippians. And it reminds us, Father, that we need to set our minds on things above and not below. And we thank you for that, Lord. We pray that as we come before you today, Father, that everything that is in our hearts and our lives and our minds, Lord, we, we submit that to you today. Father, we pray that those things that don't line up with you, Father, we would bring into line with the word of God. Father, I pray for those out there that need your encouragement. Holy Spirit, I pray you would you would minister to them. Those, Father, that uh, are not well, that are feeling ill, I pray, Father God, that that spirit of infirmity would be bound in their lives in Jesus' name, and we declare health and wholeness to them in Jesus' name. We pray that, Father. And Lord, I pray today too that, Lord, anybody out there that's lonely or feels disconnected, Lord, I pray you would send your Holy Spirit and, Father, people into their lives. Father, if it's through being at the grocery store or just in their home that they, Lord, you would 
get somebody to text them or just encourage them, Father, today. I pray, Father, that they would realize that you are there, that you are there, the ever-present presence in the time of all trouble and need, Father. We thank you for the blessings of God in our lives. We thank you for the good things, for the pure things, for the holy things, for, for the things that you've blessed us with, Father. Thank you for the rain today. Father, thank you for providing for each one of our needs, Lord. We thank you that we are blessed, Lord, that we're blessed going in and coming out, Lord. And so we just thank you for all your many, many blessings. And we give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory in Jesus precious name amen all right I also want to remind you if you have any prayer requests make sure to submit them to us you can do it off our web page and uh, if you can text me or whatever message me and we will continue to pray uh, for each and every one of you and thank you so much for being with me today and I hope that you have a good rest of the day God bless you